Streaming live across the country, tackling the topics everyone is talking about online. Share, engage, and interact. This is Newsfeed Now. Laura made landfall as a category for hurricane creating dangerous conditions along the Gulf Coast. Early this morning, it claimed two lives in Louisiana. Thanks so much for joining us here on Newsfeed Now. I'm Suzanne Bruner. Hurricane Laura intensified quickly as it approached the states. It came packing maximum sustained wind speeds of 150 miles per hour. Take a look at this video from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Looking online here, a lot of videos coming in when the hurricane hit overnight. Laura pounded the Gulf Coast for hours with ferocious winds, torrential rains, even rising seawater. The area impacted southwestern Louisiana near the Texas border. A dangerous storm surge even forced hundreds of thousands of people to flee their homes and get to a safe space. All right, let's take a look at the damage as the sun came up. A, a much different scene as well. Um, our reporters, they're on the ground right now. They've been tweeting a lot of videos. Here's one of them. This is from meteorologist Keith Monahan. This was one of the first looks that he got when he stepped outside of his hotel. Let me pull this up a little, um, a larger view here. You can see damage to the, the super motel there. Rooftops ripped apart, even glass shattered. You can even see flooding in certain parts of the area, scrolling up even more. Uh, this is um, as the scene progressed, and hours later in the morning, you can see more damage to parts of the area in Lake Charles. So we're going to get to him in just a bit. But first off, I'd like to bring in meteorologist Pat Walker from Little Rock, Arkansas. Pat, Laura has since downgraded. It's heading your way right now. What are people in Arkansas expecting? Well, we are expecting to see a storm moving in that's going to be probably unprecedented in Arkansas to have actual tropical storm moving into the state. It is still a hurricane, but this eye that came ashore last night around 1 a.m. Lake Charles time has dramatically weakened. The, the eye really is no longer there, so we're just looking at the center of circulation kind of right in now north central Louisiana close to uh, close to I-20. Maximum winds of 75, so Laura is barely holding on to being a hurricane. 74 is the minimal speed for a hurricane, so it's barely hanging on. It's moving north at 16 miles per hour. Some of the rainfall from uh, Laura is already in Arkansas, but the heaviest rainfall is still right along the I-20 corridor and probably some of the strongest wind speeds now are between Monroe and Shreveport. Ruston, Bastrop, Louisiana, probably seeing the strongest winds from that. Strong winds also in El Dorado, Arkansas, where the rainfall is heavy. Heavy rainfall already moving up into central Arkansas, and that track's going to take it right through the state. Now, I say it's unprecedented in Arkansas because tropical storm warnings. We've racked our brains the last few days. Have we ever had a tropical storm warning? We've had tropical storm conditions in Arkansas, but actual tropical storm warnings, including Little Rock here in the capital city in central Arkansas, hundreds of miles away from the Gulf Coast. Well, the storm expected to be center circulation in south central Arkansas at 7 o'clock and then Friday morning 7 a.m. as a tropical depression in northeast Arkansas. So in the evening and nighttime hours, the center of the circulation could move right through Little Rock. Now we're still seeing the center circulation here in North Louisiana. Those winds, really sustained winds, 30, 35 miles per hour, probably stronger in Alexandria, but look at those winds gusting well over 50 miles per hour, close to 60 in El Dorado, Arkansas, starting to get those winds too with a northeast wind at 31 miles per hour. Had a gust earlier in El Dorado of 55 miles per hour. It's now down to 46. The Weather Service in Shreveport tells us they've had winds gusting to 66 there. We've got trees down on cars in Shreveport, so the storm is lifting northward. So the biggest thing that Arkansas is going to face is rainfall with this as it moves up. And but also this afternoon, southeastern part of the state with these individual storms and the feeder bands that also might spread over into Mississippi. There will be a tornado potential for those. But the big story is going to be the rainfall that Arkansas will have all the way through the evening hours and even into Friday. So that southeastern part of the state does have a tornado watch until four this Thursday afternoon with all the rain though four to six inches of rainfall for a lot of Arkansas and of course there is going to be and there is a flash flood watch so Arkansas will see wind rain and maybe even a, a tornado potential in the southeastern part of the state. Pat, Suzanne? thanks so much. You know we were also talking about power outages. People have been reporting that they have been getting um, basically warnings and alerts on their phone saying be prepared and be patient when this does happen because it's going to take some time to restore and so make sure your phone stays charged. You want your Absolutely. phone to stay charged so that you know when the power goes out, you'll still have that source of information. All right. Thanks so much, Pat.
Happening right now, there is a huge refinery fire near Lake Charles, Louisiana. Very limited information coming in, but we want to get straight to Mark Rigsby. He's in the area right now. Mark, bring us up to date. Yeah, there is some serious widespread destruction here in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Just take a look at this. This is a store called Hair Saga. And the facade of this beauty store has been just completely torn off and fell on the ground. And, and part of it was a, a brick facade. But you can see everything on the inside has been exposed. All of the uh, makeup and, and hair products. And as you can see right there on the, the left of the building, uh, someone left their uh, Toyota Corolla over there. And that did not fare well when that facade fell down uh, on the car and destroyed it. Now, if we can take just a quick spin spin to the right. Uh, let me just go ahead and, and show you uh, what's going on pretty much all over town. As you can see, uh, this uh, power pole has been snapped in half over here to the right. This power pole has been snapped in half and there are power lines all over the city right now. This is a very dangerous situation where people are driving around sightseeing just to get a good look of what kind of destruction uh, Hurricane Laura brought uh, to Lake Charles. But I can tell you uh, that there is a widespread destruction all over uh, this city right now. Uh, complete homes and buildings and businesses destroyed. We were just over on one of the main uh, drags uh, right up the road where there's a lot of commerce, a lot of businesses. You're talking about fast food restaurants, car care, gas stations, you name it, it's pretty much on the ground, completely destroyed. This storm was, was so powerful, uh, it, it basically has, has shut this town down uh, right now. But we're going to stay on top of it and uh, bring more details uh, to, uh, to everyone uh, from here in Lake Charles. Uh, but for now, live in Lake Charles, Mark Rigsby. Now back to you. Mark, we appreciate it. Real quick, I don't know if we can hold his shot real quick, but look right behind him. You can see the trees, there are no leaves on there. It, it really just shows how strong and powerful this hurricane was. But yeah, he gave us a 360 view, down power lines, damage all over the place, anywhere you look. So a lot of people uh, surveying the damage this morning, we're, we're getting to see what things are looking like as the sun rises. But um, again, there's gonna be a lot of cleanup efforts out there. Uh, we told you several minutes ago uh, when we first started this show that the hurricane claimed one life in Louisiana. So on Twitter, Governor John Bell Edwards broke news of the state's first confirmed fatality. Officials say the 14 year old girl was killed when a tree fell on her house. And then about an hour later, KLF. KLFY TV also reported a second death. A six year old man died after a tree fell on him. As the day goes on, officials are expecting the death toll to rise because of the storm. Now, as you can imagine, damage is widespread across Louisiana. Staying in Lake Charles, we also have Delfred Jones on scene surveying the damage. Delfred Jones here in Lake Charles, Louisiana. What you're seeing there is the Golden Nugget Hotel and Casino. Slight damage on the sign, but we want to show you some of the things that we heard uh, from inside. Even while we were outside, we saw some of these trees go down. Uh, smaller trees like these. Some of them were uprooted. Others are just toppled over and they may be able to be replanted. We saw this mattress circling around the parking lot last night. This is its final resting place. Uh, you can see a lot of this insulation, this material here has been Stacked up. Cleanup efforts are already underway here in Lake Charles. The mayor had been working to get volunteers and other crews organized so they could start cleaning up as early as possible. Now, something that was a, a bit scary last night, we could hear the shattering of glass after we heard big pieces of tin like the one you see here hitting against these windows. Here's some of the evidence of that. You can see where it rubbed up here. And created a big scratch right along this glass. But that's not the worst part. Here we can see some of the broken glass on the ground. That's from this window over here. Now we heard this one begin to shatter uh, around maybe 1.30, 2 a.m. And to come outside and see, that's exactly what we saw. It's a double pane window and the outside pane broke. The inside one is fully intact. Over here under the awning is where we did most of our work from while we were uh, active. Uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning uh, until around 1 a.m. when winds really picked up upwards of 100 miles an hour and hotel staff had all of the media teams even some of the um, 
the people who are rooming at the hotel move indoors because they fear that it would get dangerous and rightfully so. If you take a look up at the lights, you can see where uh, some of the pieces are missing. There were large pieces of plastic like some of the ones that are still there that came crashing down last night. Some of them still in solid pieces. So uh, if you could imagine how thick that piece of plastic is, uh, those came crashing down and they're scattered about throughout this entrance area. So one of the reasons that we went indoors and rightfully so. Debris, one of the major reasons for concern and causes of injury during severe weather. In Lake Charles, Dalford Jones. Alfred, thanks so much. Yes, a lot of debris out there, a lot of damage. Um, also in the area, meteorologist Keith Monahan, he's been there since Sunday. Uh, Keith, we have been talking to um, several people out there. Delfred Jones just showed us a lot of damage around uh, one of the hotels out there. I was talking to you earlier. You were inside one of the hotels. You said this was an unforgettable experience. Walk me through what that was like for you. What did you see in here? Well, it was uh, surreal, Suzanne. Uh, the, the sound, the wind howling, the building shaking. This is a four-story building. This is a small hotel. This is a four-story building. And when the lights went off, to experience a hurricane in complete utter darkness is probably one of the most unforgettable things and unnerving things I think anybody could go through. Uh, the, the kind of wind we were getting that took the roof off our hotel. Uh, we had water on flooding on every floor. Uh, my photographer and I had a safe room designated and you know, a lot of times we talk about doing those things, but we actually went in there because mm -hmm. we thought the building was going to start to collapse because uh, hence those folks were. Uh, un un so she can hear you. Be in that situation. Yeah, you know, Keith, um, I, I know you were pretty shocked when you first stepped outside your hotel. Are you still there or where are you at right now? And show us what you're seeing. Well, what we've got, uh, Suzanne, is we are uh, a little bit up the street. I uh, just want to show you, this is uh, a couple hotels down. It's kind of a hotel strip. This is the Motel 6. Uh, the third floor completely collapsed. Uh, I talked to a couple gentlemen who were actually staying in room 220. Uh, that's the one right under the collapse section. Uh, they were horrified. Uh, you know, of course, it's the middle of the night. It's dark outside. Winds are gusting to 150 miles per hour, perhaps. Uh, blinding rain. Uh, no power. And they didn't have any idea what was going on. They're certainly shook up. Now, there's debris strewn everywhere, uh, up and down this whole hotel section. Uh, fire department's coming in, checking to make sure nobody traps. Uh, storm surge has dropped considerably. You can see kind of the debris line of where the storm surge was. It's down about three feet. But that wasn't a big deal here as the amount of wind damage that we saw across many areas. Of course, we, of course, are going to find out uh, more over the coming hours the crews are able to get further and further out from where they were located to really assess the damage. I will tell you that across the bayou from where our hotel was, uh, there were a series of homes built up, uh, you know, some with boats, some with docks. One of those homes is completely collapsed. We just, we just can't get in there uh, to, uh, to talk to those folks. I don't even know what those folks have to be, but we are going to find a tremendous amount of damage from Cameron all the way back towards the south of Lafayette including the uh, Lake Charles area as well uh, as these crews and, and rescue teams get out there and survey the damage. All right, uh, Chief Keith Monahan, thanks so much for bringing us that live report from Lake, Char uh, Lake Charles. I, I don't know if you guys noticed throughout his live report, you can hear those sirens and a lot of emergency personnel responding to the scene, just assessing the damage. There have been a lot of preparations in Lake Charles over the last several days. Dana Winter has been there all week. She wrote out this storm this morning. Dana, um, I've been following you on Twitter. The images you've been posting, incredible. Also, uh, inside the hotel you were in, you shared video just of the sound of the hurricane. Tell me about your experience overnight. It was like a whistling noise at some parts. We were hearing that really loud wind come in and it, we could hear what sounded like the doors being pulled off from the outside of the hotel. And that's exactly what we actually saw happen once we made our way around to the back of the hotel. We were able to see that there were several doors ripped off the hinges and there were sliding doors there. And then we saw some mattresses lying on the balcony. We saw some of the doors even lying on the balcony. And I do want to explain why we're actually in here right now. We were going around the back to 
show you this burger bar that's had quite a bit of damage. Over there, there are nails in the sand. There's glass in the sand. But right about when we were we were getting really close, we noticed that there was a fire that we saw earlier this morning, and it had just gotten so big. About then is when I felt my wrist go off, and we saw the emergency alert for a massive plant fire telling residents to shelter in place, close their doors, windows, and turn off their air conditioning. Now here in the hotel, it feels like they have turned off air conditioning. We're not hearing any of the sounds of the fans either. Most of these doors are shut. There's still a few people going in and out, though. I will say overnight as well, before or as the hurricane was hitting us, our photojournalist with us here, Matt Gowen, said he felt the hotel shake. He said it felt kind of like a boat. And then he actually got some video of roof tiles being pulled off the hotel here. And I don't know if you can see it if we're looking outside, but there's quite a bit of insulation lying around the ground. We're pretty sure that insulation is from the roof. There's also some large pieces of a hotel, just metal siding with large metal beams sticking out of it in the road and next to the dumpster behind the hotel. We're told that some of it is from this hotel, but a lot of it is actually from the neighboring hotel and casino that was brought all the way over here by the wind. Reporting live in Lake Charles, Dana Winter, back to you. Diana, thanks so much for bringing a live report to us. You know, the storm is now moving to parts of southern Arkansas. I want to bring back in uh, meteorologist Pat Walker from Little Rock. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get to Arkansas, you look at the video, you, you we're hearing from reporters who are live at the scene. I mean, what does this show you? I mean, just how strong this was. Indeed, and, and a lot of these hotels, they're, they're recent construction hotels, probably built very well, roofs ripped off. The one that uh, Keith had shown us, the whole third floor collapsing. I mean, that just tells you intense wind speed, just tearing those things up. Uh, and that center of circulation is now about to at least the northern edge of that, about to cross I-20. It's between Alexandria and Monroe, and it's going to the center of circulation is probably going to go be just west of Monroe, Louisiana, and cross I-20. But the heavy rainfall with that is, of course, moving into south Arkansas, too, where we already know in El Dorado, mm -hmm. we do already have some of that uh, heavy rainfall already in El Dorado and some heavy and some very strong winds too, having a gust as high as 55 miles per hour earlier. Generally, those winds are gusting 45 to 50 miles per hour in El Dorado. Well, that rainfall keeps moving up through Arkansas and uh, reporter Jay Burr is down in southern Arkansas, I believe in the town of Camden, Arkansas, and he's joining us now to kind of tell us what he is seeing there down in south Arkansas. Hi, Jay. Well, good morning, Pat. We hadn't quite made it down to Camden yet. We actually stopped here in Fordyce, actually on the intersection of State Highway 8 and State Highway 79. And, and right now, what we're seeing is uh, there's really not a lot of activity in terms of the weather. Uh, you can obviously see it's raining. Uh, the, the sort of the winds, and uh, once you kind of get up into the trees, uh, is really what we're seeing right now uh, in terms of steady wind. Uh, but down here, ground level, you really can't feel a whole lot. The, the wind's gusted up a little bit here, uh, but but not really really anything to, to think like, oh, this is a, a big time tropical system here. Uh, we have two seen, uh, probably give or take about two dozen uh, electric company trucks pass through here, obviously heading southward uh, towards Camden, towards El Dorado, and, and they've got the, the full accompaniment of those. Uh, they're the, the cherry picking trucks. Uh, we've seen some with, with the saws on the end of it. Uh, we've seen some that uh, you know, some of the even tow trucks down there with, with the big flatbeds, and I'm sure they're going to be hauling away certain things, you know, whether it be the big logs uh, or anything else for that matter. So, and I, well, I want to say we're probably maybe about 175 miles south or uh, north northeast of that center of circulation. So uh, it kind of depended, and this is probably more in your lane, Pat, of, of which way that storm tracks could be, how bad things could potentially get, at least here in the town of Fordyce, because we always know like uh, there, there's just a little bit of room, give or take, to, to see how much intensity of that storm you're going to get. As, as you mentioned earlier, this is the first time that we've seen official tropical storm warnings here in the state of Arkansas. So uh, it's just kind of a wild ride here that, that we're certainly anticipating here in the next few hours. Uh, and again, in terms of the rain, we haven't seen much beyond kind of what we're seeing, just sort of a steady rain right now. But some of those bands that we've seen on, on radar as we've been heading this way, we're, we're probably going to see some of those here in the next hour or so. But but as of right now, not a lot of activity, especially here in Fordyce, uh, where we're at. Again, we're at the, uh, the intersection of Highway 8 and Highway 79. So, uh, you know, we'll keep you guys going as we as we kind of get into this the, the meat of this storm here uh, throughout the day and we'll keep you updated. About 30 
Jay's about 30 miles north of Camden, Arkansas. Camden is is right here. So Jay is right up here in Fordyce and that county, that's Dallas County, Arkansas. He's about 30 miles away. He's seen that rainfall, but he not, talked about those trees, that wind being seen higher up and eventually it works its way down. So in places like there in South Central Arkansas, we'll probably eventually have those winds up to around 40 and 45 miles per hour, probably coming up over the next few hours. And of course, he's still driving southward and we encounter some heavier rainfall as he does, which all that rainfall will continue to move up here through our state. All right, Suzanne, I'm going to go back over to you. So so down trees, the big concern right. because of the, the, the rain. And also, um, like I said earlier, I, I believe residents out in Arkansas said that they had received some warnings about potential power outages. Mm -hmm. If Real quick, if you can take a look at my computer, I just wanted to pull up um, power outages in Louisiana because there's, there's quite a bit of it. This is just in the Lake Charles area. And then if I zoom out just a bit, you can get like the full state because the hurricane moved its way up north, but you can see right there indicated in red where those power outages are at. Uh, Pat, do you think that it's very likely that Arkansans could lose power? Uh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot there from like Shreveport to Alexandria in that area state. That's where we still had a, you know, a category one hurricane uh, move in there. Uh, and it's basically where the storm is now. Uh, I, there will be some power outages in Arkansas, no doubt, okay. especially in the part of the state that the storm is going to move into. That part of Arkansas is filled with a whole, whole lot of really tall pine trees, yeah, we which, know uh, trees uh, are, which are soft wood and they break easily and they are taller than, than power lines and they'll fall down on power lines in a lot of locations. We know crews are on standby. We know crews are probably working on this right now. Uh, according to Entergy Louisiana, 235,000 people uh, places without power at mm. this time. So we'll continue to keep you updated on this website. Pat, thanks so much for joining yep. us on Newsfeed Now as well as you. Thank you for joining us and you can stay updated on Laura. We will have that for you on our website. Thanks so much for joining us here on Newsfeed Now. Stay safe. We'll see you back here tomorrow.